YouTube, welcome back to Lucky Crypto. My name is Aaron, and today we have a action-packed video. Stuff went down. Really exciting video for you guys, and yeah, we're gonna hop straight into it. So today to start our video, we're gonna be talking about the price of Bitcoin and what's happening. Well, as you can see on the right now, we're chilling on this four-hour chart for Bitcoin. And as you can see, Bitcoin's dumped these last couple of days. Well, and as we take a look at our volume, you can see there was a there was some some good selling pressure driving down um Bitcoin, as you can see, Bitcoin's hanging around that 47,000 range right now. We're still just crabbing around. So yeah, really not too much to talk about right there. Let's move on to our, what I think is a very, very interesting story from Blockworks. Take a look at this. Looking to lock in profits by December 31st. Institutions already did. Institutional investors may have already locked in gains for the year, but analysts are bullish that 2022 will bring more lucrative returns. Take a look at this. As we head into the final days of 2021, investors are waiting portfolio rebalancing, but institutions have likely already made their last cryptocurrency trades of the year. In early December, Bitcoin lost as much as 25% in just over 24 hours. Based on that sell-off, it is likely that institutional investors may have sold high volumes of cryptocurrencies and secured profits before December 31st. So they're pretty much saying the whales, the institutions, whatever the fuck you want to call them, so right here, they're basically saying the whales, institutions, whatever you want to call them, they sold off. And what do I think about this? Well, I mean, they got to take profits. If some of these institutions, example, like um, Grayscale or these guys who really got in early to a lot of these cryptocurrencies, I mean, if they're at a ton of profit, they really got to take some profits. Do I, do I personally think they probably sold the whole bag? Definitely not, but... Like if you got into hypothetically, you got on Solana at like one dollar, and you were buying millions and millions of dollars worth it at one dollar, you're gonna be taking profits right now. So it's really just a part of the game theory, and I don't. People take profits. I don't think it's gonna affect in the long enough time. In a long enough time frame, I don't think it's gonna really affect anything. And for our next story, guys, take a look at this tweet from Dylan Leclaire. He tweeted out today: Bitcoin long-term holder monthly net position change. Light distribution over the last couple months has been getting absorbed by the market. Sam J. Rule stays killing it with the visuals. And take a look what Sam J. Rule showed up, shows us here. Guys, just take a look at these two charts right here. The first one on the top is Bitcoin price weighted by long-term holder supply, 30 day percent change. And take a look over here with the meter we're given on the chart. It says right here, 30 day percent change. On the right, on the far right, we got accumulation. And on the left, we got distribution. Left is like red, orangish, accumulation is blue but as we take a look where we are right now this is the price of bitcoin right here we see where we are right now we're in the yellow and as you can see here on the yellow that's more in the distribution side so we're like in we're right now in a light distribution phase right now and if you take a look at it down here this chart showing the long-term holder supply 30 day percent change and as you can see over here that change has continued to go up in the past year it continued to go up and we had a little correction. But overall, I just think this is a really cool chart breaking down what people are doing and who's holding. And for our next chart, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin futures open interest on all exchanges. Now, when you're taking a, now, when you're trying to compare the open interest to the price, here's what I see. We had a big accumulation period where we were just moving side to side, big side to side. Open interest was very low. When we had when we got to that point where we had that big drawdown, you can see the open interest is high. Pretty much what happens is when the open interest is high and it stays high for a while, eventually the contracts have to get settled. So there's either going to be a big pump or a big dump. In this case, it was a big dump. And then we re-entered an accumulation phase. So open interest is low. And as you can see in these past couple of weeks or whatever, the open interest has continued, has been rising. Now, what is that showing us? It's showing us that at some point, if this open interest, if this open interest just continues to keep going up and up and up, and then we stay and then we get to these levels again, and then the open interest is staying at a really high point. Eventually, we're either going to be going up or we're going to be going down. It's going to either it's going to have to flush either way. And speaking of crashes, take a look at this article from CoinDesk. Crypto futures see three hundred million dollars in losses after spot market drops. Nearly eighty percent of long positions were liquidated over twenty four hours, with ninety million in losses on Bitcoin futures alone. This is the reality of the game. It's honestly insane. Take a look at this. A drop in crypto markets from Monday evening prompted almost 300 million in liquidations across several crypto futures contracts. 
data from analytics tool coin glass showed more than 109,000 traders positions were liquidated in the past 24 hours man i really hope they weren't on that 20x leverage now what do i think about leverage trading i unless you have a ton a ton of capital i really don't think it's a move you can make good trade good trade good trade and then you do a 20x leverage trade because you're feeling yourself and then you get your whole account wiped out boom you're done i don't really think it's a move but hey man it's your money so do what you want now if you aren't familiar what a liquidation is coindesk breaks it down for us liquidations occur when an exchange forcefully closes a trader's leverage position as a safety mechanism due to a partial or total loss of the trader's initial margin they happen primarily in futures trading, which only tracks asset prices, as opposed to spot trading, where traders own their actual assets. And for our next story provided by Coindesk, Iran banning crypto mining until March 6th to save power. It's the second time this year Iran has taken measures to reduce a strain on the country's power grid. Let's take a look what this article says. It starts off with Iran is banning authorized crypto mining in the country until March 6th in an attempt to save power and avoid blackouts this winter. The government is also cracking down on illegal crypto mining by both individuals and large operators. Nothing these groups consume. This is just so dumb. Iran banned all crypto mining in the past summer to Rus. Yeah, like they're gonna try and ban it. They're probably gonna have to do the thing where China does and they're gonna have to go on a big manhunt because just saying you ban it's not gonna really do any do anything. Nobody's gonna care. And for our and for our final talking point of the video, take a look at this tweet from Dylan LeClaire. Do Tether truthers know that Tether trades against other regulated stable coins 24-7, 365? with hundreds of millions of dollars of daily volume please tell me they know this as we know guys tether the tether fund is like the biggest thing everyone you saw you might have saw that like article whatever i didn't even click on it because i'm not going to read the garbage again but some bloom i don't i don't even remember what they are some um article was getting thrown around on twitter where we were saying tether could be bigger bigger than bernie madoff and everything but as dylan leclerc points out here if tether is a fraud leverage short tether and long usd or literally anything else it's free money if you're correct that's a little there's literally a market for it as you can see there's a market twitter larping doesn't do anything and then this guy jason said wait how does one go long or short a financial device that can't change price and then he says jason usdt trades against usdc and many other stable coins every second of the day the same way bitcoin trades against usd they are trading pairs, hundreds of millions, just on centralized exchanges of spot volume per day. Look at my first tweet. Those are USDT, USDC candles. And then he then says, and they continue to go. He then says, if Tether were to ever break the buck, you'd see that reflected in the stablecoin trading pair markets. Tether often trades slightly above $1, funny enough. So yeah, pretty much as he said, you can short Tether if you really wanted to, and you can long uh, USD usdc if you wanted to there's a market for it is that smart uh definitely not and i think the whole tether thing is a bunch of bs um i i'm a big supporter of stable coins i mean stable coins are 100 needed in crypto they're needed um i don't really see any i mean i see the problem with them because they can just be printed out of thin air and everything but once again there is a market for it they could short tether but they're they're not shorting tether let's be honest the people fighting tether are not shorting tether i mean that's just the reality of it and yeah guys that's all we got for today's video if you enjoyed the video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe because we're going to be posting daily crypto videos here